my name is Heather Alberta and welcome to the video Time and Temperature Control of Potentially Hazardous Foods. In this video we will be discussing thawing, cooking, cooling, reheating and using time only as a control factor. Our goal of this video is to deliver educational materials to all food service workers including managers, staff and others in the food industry. The Michigan Department of Agriculture has set a goal to reduce the risk factors that cause foodborne illness in food service establishments. There are five risk factors identified by the Center for Disease Control and the Food and Drug Administration as the most common causes of foodborne illness. These include improper holding temperatures, inadequate cooking, contaminated equipment, food from unsafe sources, and poor personal hygiene. In this video, we will be focusing on time and temperature control of potentially hazardous foods. Potentially hazardous foods are those foods requiring time and temperature control for safety to limit bacterial growth. Risk to potentially hazardous foods includes improper holding temperatures and inadequate cooking. We will concentrate on thawing, cooking, cooling, reheating, and using time only as a control factor. Thawing of foods. There are four approved methods of thawing frozen foods, which include under refrigeration until ready for preparation, under cool running water less than 70 degrees, as part of the cooking process by cooking the frozen foods, or in a microwave oven, then cooking immediately. Thawing foods in a refrigerator may take longer, so plan ahead of time. Thawing under cool running water at a temperature of 70 degrees or less is the next approved method of thawing. A constant flow of cool water allows the food to thaw evenly and washes loose food particles down the drain. Thawing as part of the cooking process is the third approved method. This is easily done with frozen meat patties or chicken nuggets, for example. Remember to always verify minimum internal cooking temperatures. The last method is to thaw the frozen food in a microwave oven. Microwave ovens will not thaw the food evenly and must be followed by immediate cooking of the food to the required temperature. Hey, what do we got going here? Oh, why do you have uh, frozen meat out on the counter? I'm waiting for the meat to thaw. It's frozen like a brick. Well, no, frozen food can't be left out at room temperature to thaw. We need to thaw this properly. Why can't we leave the frozen foods in the counter to thaw? Should it be in the sink? Well, if bacteria is present either on the food or in the food, uh, it can grow at these temperatures, reproduce, and that growth can cause serious illness. How long has it been sitting out? About 15 minutes. Okay, well we need to thaw this quickly under cold running water. Improper thawing can lead to food temperatures in the danger zone, between 41 degrees to 135, which could result in bacterial growth. Remember to move foods through the danger zone as quickly as possible during the thawing process. If any portion of thawing food is above 41 degrees for more than four hours, the corrective action is to discard the food. Cooking of foods. Our next topic deals with cooking of foods. Cooking to a minimum internal cooking temperature will help reduce, destroy, inhibit the growth of bacteria. Cook any raw, potentially hazardous foods to the required minimum internal cooking temperature. Hold that temperature for the specified time period. Properly cooking foods to the minimum internal temperature is an effective kill step for many bacteria. Here are the minimum internal temperature cooking requirements for different foods. The following foods must be cooked to a minimum internal temperature of 165 degrees for 15 seconds. Poultry includes chicken, turkey and duck, stuffed meats, fish or pasta, stuffing that contains poultry, meat or fish made with potentially hazardous foods. Potentially hazardous foods cooked in a microwave need to be covered, rotated or stirred for even cooking cooked to 165 degrees and held for two minutes before serving. Check the food in several places using an approved thermometer to ensure proper and thorough cooking has occurred. The following foods must be cooked to a minimum internal temperature of 155 degrees for 15 seconds. Ground, chopped or minced meat, including beef, pork and fish, eggs held hot for later service, injected or brined meats, including ham and flavor injected roasts, Check the food in several places using an approved thermometer to ensure proper and thorough cooking has occurred. The following foods need to be cooked to a minimum internal temperature of 145 degrees for 15 seconds. All pork, beef, veal, and lamb steaks and chops. Pork, beef, veal, and lamb roasts 
may have different cooking temperatures and holding times. See the FDA guideline or call your local health department for details. Eggs that are served immediately must also be cooked to 145 degrees for 15 seconds. Check the food in several places using an approved thermometer to ensure proper and thorough cooking has occurred. The following foods must be cooked to a minimum internal temperature of 135 degrees for 15 seconds. Fruits and vegetables that are held hot. All commercially processed ready-to-eat foods including such foods as cheese sticks, deep fried vegetables, hot dogs, and canned foods. Remember to use an approved thermometer or thermocouple to measure the food temperature. Take temperatures in several places including the thickest part of the food to ensure it has been thoroughly cooked. Other practices to help ensure safe foods during cooking include Do not overload ovens or cooking equipment. The oven may not be able to heat all areas of the food to the proper temperature. Do not use hot holding equipment to cook foods. This equipment is not designed to cook food, only to hold the food hot. Allow the cooking equipment to preheat to the desired cooking temperature before using. Maintain equipment in good working order. Hey, did you check the temperature of the meat with a the thermometer? No, it looks done to me. Well, let's get a thermometer and check the temp. We have to make sure it's at least 155. Okay. This is why it's important to check the temperature with a the thermometer. Let's cook it a little longer and recheck the temp with the thermometer before we add it to the other ingredients. Okay. Cooling of foods. Improper cooling has been the suspected cause of multiple foodborne illness outbreaks. The FDA food code requires two-stage cooling of hot foods to 41 degrees and below. With two-stage cooling, hot foods must be cooled quickly. Stage one is cooling of food from 135 degrees to 70 degrees within two hours. Stage two continues the cooling from 70 degrees to 41 degrees with an additional four hours. This must be monitored to ensure the allowable time period is not abused. This two-stage method quickly moves food through the danger zone to minimize bacterial growth. If the food does not cool to 70 degrees within the first two hours, your corrective action must be to reheat the food to an internal temperature of 165 degrees for 15 seconds. If the food cannot be immediately reheated, then the food must be discarded. Cooling of foods can be accomplished quickly by using one or more of these methods. Use a frozen ice paddle inserted into the hot food. Stir hot foods. Stirring the hot food helps remove the heat faster. Reduce food size to smaller portions. Smaller portions cool faster. Use shallow pans or containers. A pan with more than two inches of hot food will take more than twice as long to cool. A thin layer of food allows the food to cool faster. Substitute ice for water in recipes to help chill the foods. Use approved metal pans such as stainless steel or aluminum. These types of pans help carry the heat away from the food faster than plastic. Leave foods uncovered until cooled and then cover for protection. Never stack pans of food. Allow for proper air circulation. Arrange foods in the coldest part of the cooler or freezer in protection from contamination. Examples of this would be the top shelf of a walk-in, speed racks, or rolling racks. Remember to use an approved clean and sanitized thermometer to check the temperature of the food during the various stages of cooling. One of the best methods to ensure your cooling procedure is working properly is to use a cooling log sheet. Repeated monitoring of the cooling process on the log sheets is very important. This log will verify your cooling standard operating procedure is working. Remember these cooling methods also apply to foods not cooked for immediate serving, but do require proper cooling and refrigeration. Also remember food prepared from room temperature ingredients need to be cooled too. Cool these prepared foods to 41 degrees or below within four hours. Use the methods you just learned. Using all pre-chilled ingredients may eliminate the cooling process. If the final product is above 41 degrees, it must be properly cooled. Okay, I see the chili has been in the ice bath for an hour and it's currently at 80 degrees, so it should be no problem to reach 70 degrees in the next hour. Yeah, it should, but I'll be sure to check it with my thermometer and when it reaches 70, I'll separate it into these pans and put on the top shelf in the walk-in cooler. Okay, well remember to continue to check the temperatures every hour and document them. Um, while it's in the walk-in, you should stir it too. Um, so you make sure it reaches 41 degrees uh, within four hours then cover the chili and we should be all set. Reheating of foods.
Foods may be reheated for immediate service or hot holding. If food is to be reheated for immediate service, it can be served at any temperature. For example, a ready-to-eat food can be taken from the cooler to the microwave, then to the customer's plate. If the food is to be held hot for service, then the food must be reheated to 165 degrees for 15 seconds within a two-hour time period. Proper reheating methods include use of a stovetop or oven. These devices are designed for reheating. Hot holding equipment is designed to hold hot foods, not to reheat foods. Use small batches. Stir the foods often for even temperature distribution. Use metal containers. Check the food product to verify that proper temperature was reached. Microwave reheating of foods. Rotate and stir the food during the process. This will help prevent uneven reheating. Allow covered food to sit for two minutes before serving. Repeated monitoring of the reheating process on the log sheets is very important. This log will verify your reheating standard operating procedure is working. If the food is unable to reach 165 degrees within the two hours, your corrective action would be to discard it. Is the chili ready yet? I need to put it out for service. Yeah, it should be, but I want to make sure it reaches 165. I've got to check out my thermometer. Great, thanks. Time as a control. Now you know how to properly thaw, cook, cool, and reheat foods to reduce or eliminate harmful bacteria. Another method for hot and cold holding is using time only as a control. Using time only as a control allows you to hold food for a specific time period without temperature control. If you want to use this method for holding foods, write and submit your procedure for approval. This procedure may not be used before approval. For holding hot or cold foods, a facility using time only as a control must ensure the hot food is at least 135 degrees or more and the cold food is 41 degrees or below when the food is placed in time control. The food is marked and monitored to indicate the time to discard the food and any food not marked and monitored must be discarded. The maximum time food can be held out of temperature control is four hours. Raw foods must be cooked, served, or discarded within four hours. Ready to eat foods must also be served or discarded within four hours. This policy may not be approved for high risk populations. Taking an active role in your establishment is critical to the prevention of foodborne illnesses. By using the techniques in this food safety video, you can prevent, reduce, and possibly eliminate the risk factors associated with time and temperature control. This is everyone's responsibility. What was discussed? Four methods for thawing frozen foods, how to properly cook foods to the minimum internal cooking temperature, approved methods for quickly cooling foods to 41 degrees or below, how to properly reheat foods, how to use time as a control factor. Can you answer yes to these questions? Do you know how to monitor food temperatures? Are your foods thawed, prepared, cooked, or served at the proper temperatures? Do you know the correct minimum internal cooking temperatures of foods? Do you know how to take corrective action if there is a temperature or time control problem? Do you use temperature log sheets? Do you have a standard operating procedure for thawing, for food preparation, for cooling of hot foods, for reheating foods? Do you need a standard operating procedure which includes foods for high-risk populations? If you answered no to any of these questions, you should review your food safety procedures. For further information on food safety, it is recommended to contact your local health department. This is Heather Alberta, and thank you for watching the video, Time and Temperature Control of Potentially Hazardous Foods.